Hey everyone, Paul is uh, welcome to part three of our Tamiya Porsche 124th 911 GT3. Video's coming thick and fast. I'm getting through this quick. I thought this video would take at least till midweek, but we worked on it over the weekend. And uh, we got the interior done. I say we, me. Um, and it's all in the car now, ready to go. So, without any more waffle, we'll jump straight into the build and get cracking. So, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So let's crack on with our interior. We've already primed the cockpit tub. New P Grey Primer. We've got some Tamiya LP5 through the uh, 0.35 mil Apex 18 PSI. And we're going to put some of the LP5 down in all the areas that we're not going to flock in a bit. So we don't need to do the whole lot. You could if you wanted, but just concentrate on the areas that aren't going to be covered. So it's basically all the outside the edges and that center console as well. Now the kit did come with um, carpet material to try and cut into shape. It didn't look great, it didn't conform very well, and I thought, no, let's not do that. I thought I'll use the embossing powder, which I haven't got. I've got no grey embossing powder, and it seems to be nigh on impossible to find. So, what are we going to do? Well, I decided to spray the whole thing black, um, because I wanted continuity through it all. So I'm going to have to use flocking powder. Now, I've used flocking powder before. It's an absolute bloody nightmare. It gets everywhere. And I decided a long time ago not to use it. So I've had this flocking powder for a long time. Um, <laughs> and we're going to have to use it today. So we're going to get this painted up. Leave that to dry for 12 hours or so. And we're in my house now on the following day. And I'm in my house because the last time I used flocking in my cave, I found the flocking material in my clear coat for months afterwards. So we're in the house. Once I'm done, I am literally covered in it. I'm going to strip off, not in front of camera, thankfully for you lot, like, like a walrus flossing, um, change clothes and everything before I go back in the cave. But yes, so we've got Revel Enamel Grey, which isn't the best quality either. It's very, very thin, not as thick as the black I've been using, which is a bit of a shame. We've got Tamiya Flat Brush. We've got our flocking material and our sieve up the top as well so it's the same trick we're going to use with our embossing powder we lay down the enamel paint we let that go tacky we make sure it's all fully covered and then we're going to sieve over the flocky material now one major problem with this i've had this for a number of years it looks as though the damp's got to it or moisture because it seems to have clumped together absolutely terrible which i don't realize at this moment in time until we start to try to use it in a minute. So, yes. I'm on the fence about the finish of this. You'll see at the end, you, you can judge for yourselves. I decided to leave it, and uh, I'll show you how I applied it. So I've applied the enamel where we want it, all evenly over. I've made sure we've got it all covered where we want it, and it's tacky, as you can see. And now I'm going to find out that this flock... Has gone all funny. As you can see, it's all clumped together, which isn't good. And I'm going to use the sieve to sieve over and also spill in there clumps of the flocking. So as you can see, it's starting to go down. We're going to need a lot more, and sadly, it's stuck in the tub. So, as with anything, nothing goes right. Everyone has problems, and this is it. So, we're going to apply it in there like so. Tap it round, tap it off. As you can see, it's clumped everywhere. And to this moment now, I'm thinking, oh no. What are we going to do? But after several applications like this, taking it outside and giving a real good blow off, it didn't look too bad in the end. So we've left that to dry to one side now. And we're on to our interior. We've got the Gravity Colors, Focus, Grade Up Stuff, Alcantara, Paint Set. These are the instructions. You're going to read them. Have a little bit of a read. So you get a light, a shade, and a base color. We're going through the ultimate apex, 18 PSI. Recommends 20, but 18 will do. We've got a light color, 
a dark color so the lights for highlights the darks for shadows and then the base color for the actual rest of the uh the seat so we're going to try and simulate the um alcantara if possible so we're actually through a 0.2 mil apex this isn't the 0.3 um we're about 20 psi and we're applying a light coat now i've put a gray primer down it's ump gray primer I'm not sure about the correct color prime for this because we do black, the shadows won't show. So I'm following the instructions and that calls to put the highlight down first. So we're using anywhere that would naturally catch lights, all the high spots of the seat, the edges, the front of the seat, everywhere to apply this, get that even coats. We're then coming with the shade, which is a much darker color as you can see. And we're going to apply a shadow to all the areas that naturally would cast a shadow. So into the middle of the seat, and I'm gonna do the very bottom of the seat as well, as you can see there. And then the idea is we use the base color to blend these all together and give the effect of an Alcantara seat. So we clean it between coats. The two first coats, the light and the shade, are cleaned up with alcohol. And then this one is cleaned up with lacquer thinner. Now we're through the 0.35 needle. We're at 25 psi. It says 24 there. We're actually about 25. Uh, we're going to apply it in nice thin coats and build it up nice and slow until we've blended that all together. So it does take a little bit of spraying. And I found for a little bit of a distance worked better. This also does add a bit of texture to the seat as well. And the finished result looked pretty good. So, like I said, this is the first time I've ever used this. I'm kind of using it blind. So, follow the instructions to see what kind of effect we get. And then I'll tweak it in the way I think works. Maybe a bit better in a minute. So, you can see the darker grey starting to build up slowly. We don't want to hose it on because we don't want to lose the effect. Now, sadly, we do lose the light effect. So, the way I found it worked better was to apply the light highlights afterwards uh, and then quickly blend it to so get all the dark in get the dark color down the base color down until you're happy then add a highlight and then blend that in again because it gives the highlight a darker tone to pick up from i think put it on the normal gray primer was a bit detrimental to the finish so maybe a darker gray primer could be called for so if i had a light coat to that just having a look, thinking, just do a little bit more there. We'll get the edges, make sure we get the even color all the way around. Then we'll put it down, leave for a minute. If it needs another coat, we'll give it another coat. And if not, we're happy. We've got a good color there. It's a nice dark gray color. So what we're going to do now is come back with the light again. I'm just going to carefully highlight all the areas we did at the beginning. So the very top of the seat, like so, all down the sides. And at the front, at the top of the seat as well. So there we go. Now we've added a proper bit of shade. So we'll just apply that to a happy. The paint sprays really well. Like I say, it adds a nice texture to the surface as well. It looks really good. So when you do things like this, this will always look over-exaggerated. So we blend it in. So once I'm happy, we've got the highlights. Put that to one side to dry for a few minutes. Load the airbrush up with the base color again. I've also got the center of the seat, as you can see as well. And we'll blend that in. Like so. So this is the base color now. This is the darker gray. I'm just going to blend that in so we can just see the dark effects of the shadows and the light effect of the highlights. And like I say, might not be the correct way of doing it, but I found this way worked pretty well. And I got quite a decent result at the end. Just blended in the other seat as well, done them both together. It certainly adds a lot of depth. The Alcantara looked pretty good. Had the texture as well, which looked very good. Uh, I've got several sets of this, including a few leather sets, which I think the leather will look very, very good um, just through the tones of the paint. There we go, final mist over, and I'm happy with that. So we'll leave those to one side to dry. We've got some Tamiya LP5. 
through the 0.35 apex 18 psi. As we can see, the LP5 is thinned as usual, 60-70% thinner to paint. Uh, adjust your consistency as required. I'm going to put a couple of light coats on of each. And build the colour up until we've got it nicely covered. Beautiful paint. I love the LPs. They are fantastic colours. Um, probably my favourite paint range, to be honest. Second to uh, only to Gravity. I think um, yeah, Gravity and LP is my two favourites. LPs for general around use and the gravity for the colour matched colours. Beautiful paints. As you can see, the coverage is really good. Even on grey primer, it covers really, really well. I have this larger tub. I think it's an 18 mil pot, pre-thinned. Make life easier because I use this paint a lot. And there we go. So again, just going around, covering everything. Nice thin coat to build it up. It's nice thin paint, so you don't want to be hosing it on. Just build it up. By the time you've gone around one part, you go back to the other, it's dry, and I'll take another light coat. Again, very quick, very forgiving, very easy to use paint. So, there's our semi-gloss done. There's lots of little parts to paint. Come back for a second coat on the dashboard, and as you see, it gets some real nice depth of colour. But lots of little parts to paint in the LP5. My camera keeps going out of focus. I think my light's just in shot picking it up. But there we go. All done, all nicely covered. Leave them to dry for 12 hours or so. You don't really need to, you can touch them again after a couple of hours, but I like to leave things overnight if possible. So our seats have dried. We've got some model color black with our Tamiya flat brush. Thinned with a drop of water. I'm just going to paint the seat backs. Now, I did look at these and think, oh, they've got to be carbon, and I looked at the real car, but the look of it, they're actually plastic. So I thought, okay, well, we'll paint them black then. Uh, they could have been masked up. I think that would have been a bit of a nightmare. So a little bit of careful painting does the job just as well. And a part that can't be heavily seen in the car. So just take your time. Nice, even coat. Don't try and cover it at one go. Get a light coat down, let it dry, and then come back and have a second coat later on. So the Vallejo model colour, very, very good brush paints. Um, I used to have the whole range, but I never really used them all. So I've kept one colour, and that's the black. Uh, oh, sorry, two colours. I have a German cam black brown for chipping on armour as well. But they are beautiful paints, especially thin with a little bit of water. Um, you can use UMP thinner if you want, but I make hand, it makes it dry a little bit quick. Uh, I think the evaporative properties of the uh, thinner... Obviously, where to your advantage when you want things to dry a little bit quicker. But I think they definitely work a little better thinned with a bit of water. So once the back's done, we've got one of our Winsor Newton Series 7 detail brushes now. And we're going to hand paint the little um, harness surrounds in the same paint. Some very, very careful detail paint needed. So you need a good eye, put a coat on, put it down, let it dry, then come back and pop your second coat on. There's a nice demarcation on the seat to follow around. I've got my Tamiya magnifier on, as you can see. I don't know where I'm pointing at. It's something to go on the ceiling, I think. And just apply, again, nice light coat for the uh, recess of the seat all the way around. And uh, this actually came off pretty well. Seats are lovely. Nice standard seats in the kit. Bit of detail painting. That lovely Alcantara colour from Gravity. Really coming on well. It's my big head in the way. There we go. Careful painting. Quick check around. Job done. A couple of kit decals to go down on the seat. We've got a Tamiya decal tweezers. The decals have been in the water. We're going to apply them at the top. Get them in position. Hit them with the UMP Strong Solution. Let them set. I want to set, I think we'll give the seats a quick matte varnish just to blend everything in. So remove all the moisture. If you're not happy where it is, pick it back up while it's still not set. Straighten it up. Once you're happy with it, get rid of all that moisture. And then hit it with a decal solution and that's it. So like I say, nice looking seat out of the box. Not bad at all. Paint these in a multitude of ways. Could be leather, Alcantara, whatever, you, whichever way you want to do it. We've got our 
excellent decal solutions. You can choose your weapon carefully. If you're unsure, start with the uh, less strong solution, which would be the normal, and then work your way up until the decal is set in place. Some decals for the uh, instrument panel. So there's five in total, some pretty small ones, quite awkward. Let's get them in place, get them all nicely lined up. When you're happy, remove all the moisture, and again, hit it with a decal solution to get them all set in place. So these are a bit tricky. They're a little bit tricky. They're all the Tamiya decals, so not necessarily the best, not necessarily the worst. They do require some careful handling. Um, they can be a little bit brittle, and they're quite thick as well. So double-edged sword, really. So try and handle them as little as possible. If you do, be as gentle as possible. Once you're happy, hit them with a decal solution. Because these are recessed, we'll let the decal solution work for a bit and then push them home with a cotton bud. Rather than trying to force them in now and probably crack them, we'll let the decal solution soften them up a bit and then push them in. So like I say, five of them, they get gradually smaller the further to the edge of the uh, instrument cluster that they get. So a little bit fiddly, so really take your time here. Once they're dry, you can add a drop of aqua gloss in there to give them a little bit of a gloss fit uh, look to them. Like I say, RX especially fiddly, these ones. So take your time, pay attention to what you're doing, and don't rush it. The worst thing to do with decals is rush them. Take your time, let the solutions do the work. And there we go. So we've got everything in place. I'm literally going to touch these with the solution. I'm not going to move them around. Like I said, this is UMP. I think this is strong with our Derwent water pen. All these products I'm using, you can find in the list in the video description. Once you're happy, put it to one side, let the solutions work. Get any excess, you can just wipe it off like so. Just try and steer clear of the decal. Just make sure it's fully covered in the solutions. You normally just touch it to them, and it'll work just fine. Like I say, put it on side for five, ten minutes. Come back if you need hitting again, hit them again. And then when you're happy, you can push them home with a cotton bud. Now, the speaker cover decals, there's two on the dashboard, two on the door cards. I'll show the two on the dash. Again, use the water, get them off, pop them in place, remove all the solution underneath, water, whatever you're using to set, and then hit it again with the UMP strong. If you're quick and something's not in the right place or it's moved, you can very quickly reposition it, then hit it with a solution. With thicker decals like this, the solutions can take a while to work, so you do get a little bit more work in time. Now we spray the steering wheel, the gear lever and the handbrake lever in the same Alcantara colour. Trying to use the same effect that we did before. We've got LP Dark Grey. I'll be honest, I cannot remember the number. I think it was LP... Hmm. I have to take a guess. I think it was like LP 17, if I remember right. Just give it a nice brush around that airbag. Uh, surround, I suppose it is. And put it to one side, let that dry, and then we've got a very small Porsche decal to go right in the middle. Bit of a tricky one. Get it in place, get it lined up you want to hit it with a solution. And we'll also give this a matte varnish in a little bit as well. Just to blend it all in because the LP paint is a little bit glossy compared to the Alcantara, which it would be in real life, but it just looked a little bit odd. Again, once you're happy, hit it with the solution and leave it be. So we've got a Loctite Perfect Pen. And we've applied the steering column. And now our nicely matte-glossed, matte-glossed, matte-coated steering wheel. Remove any excess CA glue if you can. Make sure the steering wheel is in the position you want, which for me is normally straight. We also had a little bit of detail to the uh, buttons on the console by just squiggling a bit of white on them nothing really technical just to give the uh interpretation of uh button layouts bit of seagull in the center to add to our gear lever which also add a little bit of silver detail too as well 
just hand painted in the detail using reference pictures. The flocking's not turned out too bad. It could have been a lot worse. So yeah, could have gone better. Could have been worse. So we glue our dashboard in place to cover up the unsightly areas where there's no flocking. And yeah, like I can say I've I've seen worse. I've seen better. So it'll definitely do. I don't think we'll be using it again. We need to have a real good look for some grey flocking powder, embossing powder. Now, seat belts. We were debating, myself and Tim, who's not going to watch this, so it won't make any difference anyway, uh, whether this should have harnesses. And there's pictures online of both. But by the look of it, a lot of the cars come standard with seat belts. A lot of them have red seat belts. I thought these would look interesting. So I thought we'll add some red seat belts. I had some standard seat belt fittings as well from an old detail upset. So I thought we'll add it. They go into the side of the um, sports seat. We don't have any holes at the side. In retrospect, I should have drilled them, but we didn't. So we just put them to the edge and glued them in place. We'll pop the photo a charm. We'll glue that in place. And then we'll pop the seat belt through the back of the harness hole. And then we'll figure out where that's going to go to when we get the body on. When we get the glass in, and we do a test fit. Because I'm hoping the pillar kind of hides it. There we go, a little dab of CA glue, hold it in place. We'll then detail paint the top of it in black, leaving the silver buckle. Pop it through the back of the seat. And there we go, one seat belt. Repeat that through the side. Put the side part on for the door cards, like so. Glue the seats in, nothing really worth showing, just a little bit of glue and sticking parts together, really. Apply four dabs of CA glue into locator points on the actual chassis. Push it home, hold it for a sec, job done. And the interior doesn't look too bad at all. Um, it could have been better, it could have been a lot worse. But overall, it looks good. Couldn't resist putting the body on to have a look, see how it's all going to look through. And it looks pretty good. The grey goes well with the purple. Purple. Like I say, we need to get the glass work in to see where those seatbelts are. Are going to be whether we need folding down the back of the seat, cutting flush, or the a B pillar is going to hide them. But that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Can't wait to get this one done. This purple is going to look great. Still not 100% sure on that wheel color, but we'll definitely decide that at a later date. Took the body back off, just showing off a bit of a closer look at the interior. Wipe off some of the excess flock that's still floating around. It's not glued in place, it's just floating around. So you will find this. Is an issue for two of those. But I'm happy with that here. The seats look good. The Alcantara paint look really well. The flocking, while it's not the best, looks okay from a distance. <laughs> Dashboards turned out well. Um, and yeah, I'm happy with this. Pretty decent interior. Nice looking car. So that is it. We are now ready for final assembly, which is what we'll do in part four. So we've got plenty of work still to do. So come back in part four and watch us finish this build off. I think that came out not too bad. The flocking, I don't think I'll ever use flocking again. It's a pain in the backside. It's so messy, it's everywhere. Um, I need to find some gray embossing powder. The only one I can find is metallic. I'm gonna have to really have a look around because I've pretty much got most of the colors. Also pretty disappointed in that Revel enamel, how watery, I know it's not actually watery, uh, how thin it is it's nowhere near as good as it used to be at all so that's a real shame so i know a lot of people use x22 so maybe that's something to try on another build at a later date but consider it didn't look great when i first did it it didn't look too bad in the end a little bit of clean up here and there with a cotton bud just to wipe off the excess flock worked quite well the focus upset from gravity i think that worked absolutely fantastic had a nice bit of detail to the seat um and uh yeah nice bit of texture as well really good looking forward to trying all those leather colors so stand by in a future build we'll see that um so yeah highly recommend those they're on the site for sale i know over on gravitycolors.com make sure it's a spanish site stay with the spanish site um and yeah fantastic service as always from gravity but yeah happy how that looked came out really well so we're on to par four now um which we've got to get the body polished the glass work done all the lights done um and just final assembly of the kit 
I'm still not 100% sure of the color of those wheels. I don't know whether to leave them silver or strip the chrome off, the silver off, and paint them in a darker color. I don't know if a darker color would suit that purple better. I don't know. I'm really on the fence. I think I need to get the car built and have a look at it. Um, the silver pops with the, the pur purple, which is why I'm thinking about maybe leaving. I don't know. If you've got any comments or views, add them down below. I do appreciate hearing everyone's feedback. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do. I'm mostly leaving silver or maybe go with a slightly darker colour. I did think of gold. I found a beautiful gold colour, but I can't replicate it at all. It's far too... Um, far too hard a colour to replicate. I tried and couldn't get anywhere near it. I don't want to do a standard gold at all. I think it'll look a bit tacky. So yeah, I think we'll find out on part four what we're going to do there. I think I'm going to have a look around over uh, the next few days, see what I can find. But that's it. So that's part three done and dusted. Um, we'll be back in part four. God knows when. Hopefully in the next few days we can get this one finished and move on to the next project. Which is you've seen my latest review. It's probably going to be that, to be honest. So, fingers crossed. I'll have a very interesting build starting next. And, uh, yeah. Again, let me know your thoughts on that. <laughs> so, there we go. Thanks for watching today. So, there we go. Uh, thanks for watching today. I will catch you all next time in part four. Make sure you check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum. Check out umpretail.com. Check out my Paul SM Facebook page and Instagram page. Live the bench group for the live show. Uh, news and links and the Offer Hangout group as well for all our Offer Hangout links that you can come and join us off air every day. Thanks for watching, make sure you sub to the channel, give it a thumbs up and uh, hit the bell notification and of course please leave a comment down below. Catch you later everyone, take care, bye bye.